In this video, we're gonna talk about the absolute value of functions. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom, and this is Like a Math Class. You'll sometimes see these two bars on the side of a function or on the side of a number. That's called the absolute value. We're gonna be looking at what does an absolute value mean, first of all, and then we're gonna look at how does this apply to an actual function, both algebraically and graphically. Let's get to it. The absolute value, uh, sometimes called the modulus. Uh, absolute value is what I always used in North America where I, where I grew up. Modulus, I think, is more of a European phrase. Um, but the absolute value or the modulus of a number is the distance from zero to that number. Keep in mind, as we talk about this, that of course we can move in a negative direction, but it's impossible to move in a negative distance. Let's start with this person over here. They are walking in this direction, and let's say they are moving six units. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure how far they've gone. That will be six units. So if the distance from zero to six, the absolute value is just going to be that, six. Now what about this person over here? Where are they going? They're going to negative five. So they're gonna go over here and they're gonna go to negative five. Now as we take this ruler once again and we move it over this way, now we can measure how far they've gone from zero to negative five. As we measure that distance, they have gone five units. That's what they've done when they've gone from zero to negative five. And you can even think of this as if you laid a ruler down or a, a meter stick down on your floor. If you walked to the end of it, you walked one meter uh, or whatever the distance is on your, on your ruler. If you walked backwards or if you turned around and went the other way, you still only walked one meter. So you haven't gone a negative distance, you've just turned around and walked that way, right? You've walked in a negative direction or maybe you walked backwards, but you haven't gone a negative distance. You cannot go a negative distance. If we're looking for the absolute value of x, um, we write it this way. And this thing here, this is called a piecewise function. I don't know if piecewise is supposed to be two words or not, but the piecewise function basically says apply different rules for different values. So in this case, uh, let's start down here. If x is greater than or equal to zero, in this case we've got six, so x is equal to six. So if this was our input, then our output was just a value of six. If x is less than zero, so let's say x is equal to negative five, that's less than zero, take the opposite of x. So that's saying take the opposite of negative five. And the opposite of negative five is of course just five, which is what we have up here. The bottom line is the absolute value means always positive. A lot of people get tripped up when they first look at this because they think, ah, the absolute value of a negative five is five. So that means the absolute, absolute value of six must be negative six. I'm taking the opposite signs, but it's not that. It's always take a positive value because we're always talking about distance. Distance can only be positive. So always positive. Now let's graph the function of y equals absolute value of x. So we already know what the function of y equals x is, right? We know that if x is one, y is one. If x is two, y is two. We know the absolute or the, the equation for y equals x is going to be that line. So everything that is greater than or equal to zero, we make it be the same exact value. So if the input is greater than or equal to zero, then the output will be that exact value, right? The absolute value of x. So the input was one, the output was one. The input was two, the output was two. Now, what happens if we want to find the, uh, with values that are less than zero? So now we're looking at what happens if x is negative one. Well, if x is negative one, take the opposite of that negative one or make it positive one. And what if it's negative two? Well, that's gonna be positive two. Negative three is gonna be positive three and so on. So the other half of our graph will look something like this, sort of. That's off a little bit. Let's, let's move that down just a touch. There we go. So this is your graph of your absolute value of x. You're always going to have these values going up here because as the inputs change, 
we have to change what rule we're doing. So what does y equals the absolute value of f of x mean? That means take the absolute value of the result or what we call our output of the function. We often think of this as the y value. Here, just like we had up above, if f of x is greater than or equal to zero, then use the, the output that you normally have. We're not talking about the x values now, we're talking about the whole output. So the f of x is the output, the result, the y value. If the y value is less than zero, then take the opposite of that. So this is take the opposite of the result or again of the output. Sketch the graph of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x times x minus four. Now, this is a great review of quadratics and we've got a whole uh, playlist of quadratic videos, so make sure you check those out if you haven't seen those or if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about with a quadratic. But basically, we know from our, our study of quadratics that we're gonna have two x-intercepts. One is going to be at x equals zero and one is gonna be at x minus four equals zero, which is positive four. We're basically looking at these two values here for our x-intercepts. Now it's always helpful to find a third point with your quadratic. We know that without the absolute value, this is gonna be opening upwards, so it's gonna be looking like this, but we need to know where the middle is. The middle is always in between our x-intercepts, so it's gonna be at x equals two. How far down do we go? Well, if we wanna know how, how far down here we go it, without the absolute value, we would say, well, what is f of two? That would be uh, two times two minus four, and that's gonna be uh, minus four. So we would normally have a graph that looks something like this. Maybe we even extend this up a little bit more, and we extend that up a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. Now that's our normal graph without the absolute value. But now let's take a look at what we're saying up here. If the values are greater than zero, then leave it the same. So that's gonna be these parts right here, right? That's greater than zero. If this is less than zero, if the output is less than zero, take the opposite value of that. So all of this down here is less than zero, so we now need to take the opposite value of that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this vertex and I'm just gonna flip it up here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it right there. And now this is roughly what my graph looks like. So, uh, you know, the other thing you may want to do is as you're graphing these, you could always like make this a dotted line down here so you can indicate to whoever's grading your paper, uh, wait, this is, this is what my original is, but this is my actual function right there. I'm actually gonna get rid of those highlights because this is my function here. So maybe even like just take this whole thing, we'll make it all green, right? So that way we can say, this is our actual function. What you have is everything is positive. All of your function is above the x-axis. All we did is we took whatever was below the x-axis and we just reflected it across the x-axis. And that's really all you need to do for absolute values. If you're just talking about the absolute value of a number, make sure you're always making it positive. If you're taking the absolute value of a function, make sure the output is always positive. I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up and I will check you in the next video.